All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and bring the regular meeting of the City Council for February 14th to order. Let the record reflect a starting time of 716. Please note that uh, we are still asking members of the public as well as city staff and city council to uh, continue to wear masks uh, as a safety measure for the public in our community. Uh, we certainly uh, appreciate your adherence. Uh, that being said, Clerk uh, Swope, would you take the roll? Certainly, uh, Council Member Brown. Present. Council Member Daniels. Here. Council Member Garza. Here. Council Member Hussein. Here. Council Member Jackson. Here. Council Member Spadafore. Council Member Spitzley. Council Member Wood. Here. There are seven members present at quorum. Council Member Spadafore is absent. Thank you. That brings us to the meditation and Pledge of Allegiance. Do we have any folks that need to be remembered tonight? Um, Councilwoman Wood, Vice President Wood, sorry. Uh, that's all right. Um, thank you, President Hussein. Um, two that I'd like us to remember for the last few weeks, we've been remembering uh, Penny um, Brewer in our uh, prayers. Penny. Um, is the mother of Fonda Brewer. Uh, Penny did pass away. And so if we could uh, remember the family um, during this time. Also someone that many of us know, and um, that was Jay Price, who um, worked um, in this community and owned a um, black supported um, newspaper for um, many years also passed away, so if we could remember his family as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Spitzley. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, you know, right before I started, um, ran for council, I used to watch city council. You know, don't, don't, don't comment, but I would watch city council on a regular basis. And, you know, I, I would always um, marvel at some of the folks who would come and comment and how well prepared they were and how, you know, how passionate they were. And we lost one this weekend. So Frank Curtis X um, died, and you know he was a man that I do remember often coming to council, um, commenting. His main focus was always about about children, um, and about keeping our kids safe. Um, but again, you know, along with a lot of the other um, folks who used to come to council on a regular basis, he was always prepared, um, most of the time accurate, um, but you always knew that he had a love of the city of Lansing. Um, his obituary uh, said that um, he was the inspiration behind the Southside Community Coalition, behind the creation of the Southside Community Coalition on West Holmes Road. Um, he uh, was a person who was concerned about kids having um, some place to go and having support. Um, and so based on that, that the Southside Community Coalition was created. And so um, I'd like to um, keep in our prayers um, the family of Mr. Frank Curtis X, who um, just recently died. Are there others? Yeah, and I, I was actually going to address that as well. Um, Frank Curtis X, he touched uh, many, many lives in our community. Uh, he has uh, an extensive family that we need mm -hmm. to think about tonight. As a matter of fact, I uh, grew up with his son, Frank. Uh, and uh, his impact on uh, his community, his impact on his family, um, very, very clear in terms of what type of individual uh, Mr. Frank Curtis X was. Uh, one of the things, you know, we always loved about uh, Frank is he always had a bag of books with him. Uh, yep. And, you know, he would, I mean, it would be um, just a thrill uh, for him to be able to pull those books out and, and to educate you on something. Uh, so he was really about uh, kind of lifelong, uh, continued uh, education, a commitment to that. The other piece is I, you know, I, I watched city council for years before I um, actually ran for city council, and I always appreciated the conviction he spoke with. Um, and I mean, a lot of conviction, but incredibly respectful, yes, understood yes. the importance of, of relationships and leveraging relationships. Um, but again, always spoke with um, tremendous conviction, so certainly appreciate him. Uh, the other one is uh, Charles McCarthy. Uh, so Charles um, was a longtime barber, I think for a few decades at least, at uh, BW's Hair Salon over on West Holmes. Uh, folks that, that would walk into BWs and look to the right, you'd always see Charles there uh, smiling, uh, happy to greet you. Um, he was a counselor to many, and you know, you know how the, the barber is uh, over in Southwest Lansing in our community. Um, they are your advisor, they're your friend, they're a listening ear, they're a, uh, and Charles was all of those things. So I would ask that you also keep, uh, keep Charles McCarthy's family, uh, as well as the, the BW family uh, and the Southwest Lansing community uh, family in your, uh, in your thoughts uh, and prayers tonight. Thank you so much. 
Uh, with that being said, if you'd uh, rise and join me in a moment of meditation, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. You have for your approval the council proceedings of January 10th, 24th, and February 1st. Vice President Wood. Uh, thank you, President Hussein. I would move the minutes from January 10th, January 24th, and February 1st. All right, there is a motion on the floor. Is there further discussion? Hearing and seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, we are to comments by council members and the city clerk. Vice President Wood. Uh, we have uh, a motion for a late item. Oh. Um, so at oh. this time, I would move to suspend rule uh, nine for the consideration of a late item. And this is setting a public hearing, um, which we will take up later this evening as part of the rezoning for 5411 Wise Road. And thanks for always being sharp because we both missed that. <laughs> um, so there is a motion on the floor. Uh, further discussion? <laughs> Hearing and seeing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Now, we're, now we are, sorry, to uh, council comments. Vice President Wood? That, that, was oh, that was it. <laughs> okay, I thought you had something else. Nobody else? All right. Um, Clerk Swope. I don't believe I have any announcements, uh, so we can proceed to community event announcements. If there's anyone in the audience with a community event, you can please uh, give, you, we'll give you one minute to tell us the details of your event. Hi. Okay, so I just wanted to uh, talk about a BWL event that we're hosting in the near future. Brina Pugh, Community Relations Manager for BWL. We're doing some fa financial pandemic relief fairs. We had a couple of these previously in the fall. And we're having two more. We're partnering with a dozen community organizations for this. The first one's on March 9th from 1 to 5 at Geyer. The second one's on March 15th from 4 to 8 at Let's. There will be resources available on site for utilities, rental, mortgage assistance, and we're partnering with CADA to make sure people can get free rides to and from the fair. So I just wanted to announce that. Thank you. Any other community event announcements? All right, then we'll go ahead and move on to speaker registration for public comment on legislative matters. Uh, legislative matters tonight do include uh, the scheduled public hearing uh, as well as the uh, items council will be acting on. So that is items two uh, through 22, or I'm sorry, two through 23 in addition to the late item um, that are eligible to be discussed at this point. So if in the next minute, uh, you can fill out a blue form and give it to Jessica, our intern in the back. Um, I, I do understand we will be not, the council will not be acting on item 21, but it is still eligible for public comment. So uh, if you need to sign up, uh, please do so in the next minute. And with that, we are to the mayor's comments. Mayor Shore. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, wanted to, to throw a few kudos out to some folks. Um, our HRCS uh, community forum went very well. We had over 90 people there, um, and our applications uh, for our HRCS basic human needs dollars are due by February 18th, so hopefully all these organizations will be able to apply and we can get those dollars out. Uh, I want to thank and offer up a great job to our plow crews um, and to, uh, to Natalie Singer and Andy Kilpatrick in our public service as the fun naming of our plows was certainly a hit. Um, and I've had people tell me which plow was in their neighborhood, but it shows that they were looking at the plow maps. And I actually had someone complain to me that we did too good of a job plowing the streets and the schools were in, and they were very upset that we did too good of a job plowing the streets. So wonderful job to our public service staff. Sorry to all the youth who had to go to school. Um, I wanna congratulate Sweet Encounters who had a ribbon cutting today. Uh, on in the uh, the old um, Naps building, 
uh, wonderful uh, gluten-free, healthy treats. Um, so Nikki uh, did a great job. So they had a ribbon tasting there and everyone check out Sweet Encounters. I wanna congratulate Totsi, which is uh, the new African food and uh, entertainment place on Michigan Avenue with the old spotted dog and the old for crepes sake uh, uh, place on Michigan Avenue. Uh, again, uh, another wonderful addition to our downtown. Uh, I want to congratulate Xavier DeGroat, who opened up his DeGroat um, Autism Foundation headquarters uh, over in the Meridian Mall. And congratulations to uh, all the OTCA annual awards winners. Um, wanted this council to know, because I know there were several questions. We have uh, a variety of information on warming centers and shelter information on our website. I know we've had that conversation in the past, and it's fairly in-depth. So it's on our website. We've been providing it to all the different agencies and others because not everybody checks the website. But uh, Kim Coleman and her staff and our emergency management staff did a great job putting that together. Um, we have our final participatory budget meeting this Saturday at noon on Zoom. So anybody who wants to check that out, uh, it's the last one before we present our budget to city council. And then certainly the public will have the opportunity to weigh in on the budget as city council considers it. Um, Winterfest is coming up February 26th, which will be before the next council meeting. Uh, so that should be a lot of fun in downtown. And finally, we have our uh, mobile uh, food bank, food pantry at South Church of the Nazarene this Saturday at 9 a.m. until 11 or the food is gone. So hopefully anybody who needs some food will be able to, to sign up and, and show up at the South Church of the Nazarene on Holmes in South Lansing. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Okay, we are to um, public comment on legislative matters. As I indicated, that includes items uh, two through 23 on the agenda, as well as the late item. And uh, one of those, uh, item number two is a public hearing. I'll read into the record in consideration of SLU two of 2021, special land use permit for 5411 Wise Road to allow for a new Board of Water and Light electrical power substation in the R2 Suburban Detached Residential Zoning District. I will uh, note that uh, we, we did have a, a notice issue, so we will be having a second hearing on this SLU, but you do have uh, this opportunity to be heard as well as a future opportunity. Councilman Garza, do you have anything to add uh, in terms of the public hearing? Yes, uh, so the first public hearing will be scheduled for February 28th. Uh, the special land unit uh, uh, 2-2021 is a request by the Lansing Board of Water and Light for a special land use permit to construct a new electrical power substation. Uh, 5411 Wise Road, like you said, the new substation will be larger and uh, more energy efficient than the existing substation, which is inadvertently across the street. Uh, it's part of the Board of Water and Light's overall plan to replace the power generated by the coal burning Eckert Power Station. The planning board met on December 7th. Uh, they voted five to zero to recommend approval of the request, which a representative of the Board of Water and Light spoke at the public hearing and no other comments were received. Thank you. Thank you so much. And just a clarification. Um, so tonight we, we are having a public, well, we're having a public hearing, but we, we didn't notice it correctly. And so uh, because of notice requirements, our second public hearing uh, is actually March 14th. Uh, so that being said, clerk's vote. Okay, we have one speaker tonight and that's Darren Cunningham. Good evening. Darren Cunningham from Orbit Water and Light. Um, this electrical substation um, is going, like you said, is going to replace our existing one, part of our Leonard, uh, Lansing Energy Tomorrow effort to uh, supply green, reliable energy to the community. Um, the construction on this is roughly going to start towards the end of this year in 2022 um, and construction going all the way through to 2024. Um, once the construction of the new substation is completed, that's when we would tear down the existing substation. Um, the parcel um, is currently located on BWL um, property. Um, one of the attributes to this also, there is some uh, infrastructure drainage on uh, Pleasant Grove. And through working with some of the city and some of our design, we're hoping to uh, take care of some of the infrastructure drainage on Pleasant Grove also with this project.
Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, then we are to the referral of the public hearing. Development and planning. Okay, then we are to the consent agenda. We actually have an ordinance oh, for sorry. passage. Get my stuff together tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We all take care of each other. Okay. We are to ordinances for passage. We have an ordinance of the City of Lansing, Michigan to amend the Lansing codified ordinances by amending Chapter 1218, Sections 1218.01 through 1218.99 to conform to the requirements of MCL 324.9101 the Soil Erosion and Sedimentation Control Act and all applicable regulation, regulations is read a second time by its title. The ordinance was reported from the Committee on Development and Planning and is on the order of immediate passage. Councilman Garza. Well, I think Chris Swope just uh, sum, summarized it up. Basically, this is to conform with the requirements of the state of Michigan. And, and with that, I would move for an immediate effect. Nope, so we'll, oh, yep, we'll vote on it first and then should it pass, we can move for immediate effect. Perfect. All right, is there, there's a motion on the floor. Further uh, discussion? Seeing and hearing none, uh, Clerk Swope. Okay, on adoption of the ordinance, Council Member Brown. Yay. Council Member Daniels. Yay. Council Member Garza. Yes. Council Member Hussein. Yes. Council Member Jackson. Yes. Council Member Spitzley. Yes. Council Member Wood. Yes. Seven yeas, zero nays, the ordinance is adopted. And I would ask for immediate effect, please. All right, there's a motion on the floor for immediate effect. Further discussion? Seeing and hearing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, now we are to the consent agenda. Okay, so very quickly before I turn the floor over, uh, we have uh, a number of appointments. Uh, it's not every day that we are working to essentially populate an entirely new board. Uh, and so um, council leadership, uh, as well as um, our office manager and, and Mr. Swope, had some conversations about how to best navigate this. Um, and instead of um, actually going through each uh, appointment respectively, um, you know, bringing them down, swearing them in, uh, we thought it would make more sense to actually have them on the consent, understanding that um, you know, there, there was a, a very thorough vetting process of each applicant as part of our committee process. And as somebody that sat in on, I believe, all of these uh, appointments, I can tell you that our colleagues did a fantastic job um, unearthing anything that needed to be unearthed. I can also tell you that we have an incredible slate uh, of candidates that we're actually appointing to, to uh, different boards and uh, commissions through the city of Lansing uh, today. Um, so that being said, once we move the consent, what we'll do is we'll actually invite everybody down um, and we will swear in everybody that is here together. Um, and so that's going to be a, just a, a really fun moment. So that being said, I'm going to turn the floor over to uh, Vice President Wood. Uh, thank you, President Hussein. Um, at this point, I would move the consent agenda and ask that the clerk read the appointments into the record. Okay, we have for the Arts and Culture Commission, uh, Alice Brinkman as the fourth ward member, Mary Tashash as an at-large member, Kevin Bonds as the second ward member, Morgan Butts as an at-large member, CC Bordeo as the third ward member, um, uh, Diane Garden as an at-large member, and Shirley Carter Powell as an at-large member. Um, and then for the um, Economic Development Corporation, Tax Increment Finance, and Brownfield Redevelopment uh, Authority, we have Jordan Sutton. And for the Human Relations and Community Services Advisory Board, Sharla Burnett. All right, so there is a motion on the floor. Uh, further con uh, discussion? Seeing and hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. So if you are, do we do we have names of folks that are actually here? Um, I think so, but okay. uh, why don't we do the Arts and Culture Commission yep. first and then we'll do the other ones individually. All right, so right. if you are here for the Arts and Cultures uh, Commission, which is uh, Alice Brinkman, Mary Toshash, Kevin Bonds, Morgan Butts, Cece Bordeo, Diane Garden, and Shirley Carter Powell. Come on down. And families, if you want to come up and get pictures, and feel free. Thanks so much.
You can go down there. Congratulations. All right. If we have, um, and I'm not certain, if we have Mr. Jordan Sutton on hand, come on down. Not seeing Jordan. How about uh, Miss Charla Burnett? All right, Charla, come on down. And this would be for the Human Relations and Community Services Advisory Board. Congratulations, and I do apologize out of the nine appointments tonight, there was one uh, interview that I did not sit through, and that was for Jordan Sutton. I just referred to Jordan as a mister, and my understanding is Jordan's a missus, so I apologize. Congratulations, folks. Thank you. That takes us to resolutions for action. We have item 13, the Oprah for Rio Ventures. Thank you so much. Uh, Councilman Garza. Thank you, Council President. So what we have before us is a resolution to establish an obsolete property rehabilitation act district. Uh, so they're creating a district at 1102 South Washington Avenue, Lansing. And so what that would be is uh, at the 1102 South Washington Avenue will be redeveloped into a location that includes restaurant and food venue. It's like a concept on the vacant obsolete building and a vibrant outdoor space on the undeveloped land. The concept that, uh, of this location will be similar to the Little Fleet in Traverse City, We're kind of like a food truck uh, uh, establishment where you can go there and meet, uh, eat the different uh, meals from the different food trucks with one, I think, general building in the center of it and I may be butchering this a little bit but I think it's a it sounds like a pretty good uh, utilization of the property and potential to grow as well so with that I would move the resolution there is a motion on the floor is a further discussion I think the only thing I would add is that we did have a public uh, hearing January 10th um, all feedback has been generally positive um, and that what we're doing is only creating the district and so in terms of the actual certificate I do think they have um, have 
indicated that they're going to ask for the, the full 12 years in terms of the, the property tax freeze, but uh, any request for a certificate would have to come back before this body. Uh, that being said, again, there is a motion on the floor. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, item 14, amended council committee assignments. Sure, so um, this is, again, um, Passing the a little unusual. Oh, I'm so sorry. There you go. Vice President Wood. <laughs> President Hussein. Thank you so much. A um, little bit, you know, obviously out of the ordinary. We had, obviously, the, the resignation of Mr. Brandon Betts back on January 7th. Uh, that precipitated a process um, to actually fill that position. Welcome, Mr. Daniels. Um, and let me tell you, folks, um, at home, uh, Mr. Daniels was appointed on February 1st, sworn in on February 1st, um, and I can attest to the fact that he has been incredibly busy uh, and working incredibly hard to learn the position, to grow relationships, um, and, and he's just already been a tremendous asset, so we certainly appreciate him. In any event, what we had to do in the interim uh, is we had to maneuver some, some council members onto um, some committees on a temporary basis. So we were always going to be back at this place adjusting those committees um, once we actually had uh, the successor to Mr. Betts. Uh, so pursuant to Rule 16 of the Lansing City Council rules, we do have to um, actually read these into the record. Uh, and so what we're going to do with regard to committees, um, there will be two committees that will see changes. Uh, the first will be committee, the Committee on Public Safety. Uh, Council Member Wood will uh, continue on as the chairperson. Uh, Council Member Daniels will be uh, invited on as the vice chairperson. Uh, and Council Member Brown uh, will serve as the member at large. And then in terms of the Committee on City Operations, Council Member Spitzley will continue to be the chairperson. Council Member Daniels uh, will come on as the vice chairperson and then myself uh, Council Member Hussein uh, will continue on as a member. And essentially what we did was just uh, kind of plugged Brian into the vacancies that were left by uh, Mr. Betts. Uh, and then in addition, the following 2022 Council Member Board and Commission assignments will be updated as uh, follows. The Capital Area Michigan Works Administration Board will now include Council Members Daniels, or Daniel, Daniel, sorry, Brown and myself. And Tri-County on Aging Consortium Board uh, will include Council Members Spitzley and Daniels. So with that being said, I would move the resolution. We have a motion on the resolution. Are there any questions or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. I pass the gavel back. Okay, and we have item um, 15, the Oprah District for uh, 1247 Center Street, LLC, at 224 South Washington. All right, Councilman Garza. Thank you, Council President. So this is another uh, set in, uh, creating an Oprah district at 224 South Washington Square, Lansing, Michigan. Uh, the applicant intends to use a rehabilitated facility as follows. The facility will become one of the most popular, according to them, in storied music and performance venues in the Midwest. It looks like this, uh, this um, developer has been in business or for what, 30 plus years, I believe. and. Uh, it will be considered the top destination for live music in Michigan while earning accolades of local musicians, industry leading and nationally touring artists. Performances will include all genre, genres of music as well as other entertainment events. These will include pop, rock, hip hop, country, bluegrass, folk, Latin, jazz, comedy and more. So they did, uh, what do we have, a public hearing on January 10th I believe? And uh, with that, I would move the resolution. All right, there is a motion on the floor. Is there further discussion? Uh, again, the only thing I would add is that this is cre the creation of the district. Uh, and so any request for a certificate would have to come back before this body. Uh, that being said, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. And we are to item uh, 16, a claim appeal for uh, 1032 Clear Street. Councilwoman Spitzley. Thank you, Mr. Um, President. So. This is a claim appeal for um, $409 in trash violation fees at 1032 Clear Street. Um, in our um, government ops um, committee, Mr. Todd Dowrick, and I don't think he's here, um, came forward. Um, the issue was that there was trash, as you can see here, in the recycle bin. Um, there were um, particularly um, plastic um, window shades and some other things that were not, that are on the list of banned items for recyclables. Um, they were provided notice. Um, Mr. Dowrick's staff person who had the same name, I'm assuming it was a relative, 
claims that they came and they picked up the trash that was around the um, recyclable bin, but there was still the plastic um, uh, window shades in there, and they also claimed that um, the um, tenant put more trash in the recycle bin. Um, we explained to him the policy was that, um, you know, if, if our folks came on and they saw violations that they were going to um, act on that and remove it and charge, um, notwithstanding whether or not um, his, his uh, tenant had added more, that it was really his responsibility to educate the tenant. Um, but that, you know, no matter what, those plastic uh, window shades were not approved recyclable material. Um, so we um, upheld the, um, the decision um, of the claims appeal. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm a little, I lost it for a minute there. We, have, we upheld the decision of, 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 of the claims, the CRC, the claims appeal folks, um, for $490 in trash violation fees for 1032 Clear Street. And with that, I would move the resolution. All right, there's a motion on the floor. Uh, are there questions or comments? I think the only thing I would add is that, um, you know, as, as with so many, uh, this particular applicant um, owns dozens of rentals in the city of Lansing. Um, this particular property has been owned since 1996. I think dating back to maybe 2015, there's been some 26 enforcement actions on this one property, uh, including DMVs, um, trash, grass, safety, the list goes on and on. And in the correction letter, um, which this individual uh, is well aware of, in the correction letter, it clearly states that if our contractor arrives on site to abate um, and there is additional um, material that is in, in violation of the code that that will be removed at the owner's expense. Um, and so that certainly factored into our decision making. And I, I'm just going to add that, you know, it, it, he is a repeat offender. And, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's important for us as council members, as we're looking to these, you know, we have responsibilities to our residents to make sure our residents live in clean, safe, you know, areas. And that when you have somebody that's not in this community, um, that owns homes in our city and that do these type of things and, and don't really have a regard for, you know, our regulations. Um, and, you know, provided he was provided notice and he was given an opportunity to cure and he, he decided not to, it, it, it makes it hard, so. Yeah, and I certainly appreciate that. The only, the only other thing I'd add is that we did have a conversation as part of committee. It's almost a social contract of sorts when you talk about um, landlords and you talk about tenants and obviously, um, the hope is that, um, you know, folks that are renting are empowered um, to at some point uh, transition into home ownership. And, uh, and so, you know, we really uh, discuss kind of this, this um, responsibility of the landlord to really make sure that their tenants um, not only know uh, the code of the city, but also know how to adhere to the code uh, and things of that nature. Uh, that being said, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, item 17, setting a public hearing for Brownfield number 80. Mr. Garza. Thank you, Council President. So what we have before us is a Brownfield plan number 80. It's a 30-year Brownfield plan. Uh, there's quite a bit of asbestos to be remediated from the property. It's a, excuse me, it's a mixed-use development. Looks like it's going to be 30 uh, units, affordable housing potentially. With uh, uh, They're working with the Veterans Affairs on that as well. It's a 14 million capital investment project by Ferguson Development. We do have the developer here. However, there's gonna be a public hearing set for February 28th. Uh, this is part of the South Action Plan from 2016, updated in 2021. All tax has been paid on this property uh, by, from Land Bank. 27,000 square foot new build, community-based building, uh, talking about community-centered healthcare, like a holistic approach. Uh, health screenings, wellness services, uh, financial empowerment. They're working with LAFQ, Capital National Bank. Oh, let's see here. They're looking at uh, restorative justice, peace social worker, possibly uh, implementing a community peace officer, or social worker, uh, technological peace, smash education, mental health, social connectivity, job training hub offsite. I mean, a myriad of, of different potential um, on-site uh, development here, but 
Lancy School District, 14 different submittals, art, mural, sculpture, etc. This is the old school of Malcolm X, and they uh, are working with actually his daughter, correct? And potentially having some pieces and, and looking at getting a historical piece from Malcolm X for this property. Big kudos to Adam for getting the development to this corner. I mean, this is a much needed development in Southwest Lansing. And with that, you know, I, I would move the resolution. All right, there is a resolution on the floor. Um, the only thing I'd say is I, I certainly can't take credit. It, I mean, there are so many individuals in Southwest Lansing um, have been part of that, uh, that discussion. Uh, you know, obviously dating back, you actually um, referenced the Southwest Lansing Action Plan. Uh, so that work's been um, by the community being done since, you know, 2015, 2016. Um, and we certainly uh, appreciate this particular uh, development company. We appreciate, obviously, the administration, Lee from the LEDC, um, who have just worked tremendously hard uh, to bring this uh, thing past the goal line. Uh, Councilwoman, or Vice President Woods. Uh, thank you, President Hussein. Um, I just wanted to, to add, I appreciate the fact that when the developer um, for this project was challenged, the Ferguson Development Company, and to doing something on the south end, they stood up. They said absolutely and have been working to try to make this thing a reality. So as we go through this process, you know, I think, um, I, again, when we think of the administration, we think of LEAF, we think of uh, President Hussein, the, the different ones, the SWAG, all the groups that worked on this. Um, if the developer had not stood up to this, um, we wouldn't have the other ones to thank as well. And so um, I do want to, to make sure that as we're moving forward in this process that we do understand that, you know, all my time on council, we've had different developers that have come forward and made promises, different developers that we have asked, let's do something in the south end. And this is the only one that has stepped up and said, yes, I will do this. So thank you. Yeah, and the, you know, e everything about the project, uh, I mean, there's complexity to it. Uh, and, and I said this, I've said this a number of times now, um, I was concerned, you know, obviously as we um, kind of meandered our way through a, a pandemic, that only exacerbated uh, every challenge uh, of a project like this at a site like that. Um, I was I was really really concerned that uh, this particular developer would um, would walk away, and they I mean just unwavering commitment, and it's been um, it's been very very uh, encouraging, uh, inspiring maybe, uh, and so we certainly uh, appreciate this this group of people. Uh, Councilwoman Spitzley. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I, you know it's. I, I always I, I always think that the word transformative is is used a little bit too much, but I truly believe that this is going to be transformative for that corner. I walk down there from my house to my mom's house, and I pass that place every day, and you know, wondering what could be done, and the vision that you guys that is that is put forth for this um, will really transform that that um, that area, not just for that site, but you've got you know, a corner, a grocery store to right diagonally. And I was talking to him and he's all excited about how that will impact his business and the businesses around. And so this is exactly what, you know, the Brownfield legislation is for, is, is to look at areas in our city and, and transform them into the veterans housing, the, the education, the financial aspect for for an area that that it sorely needs it, and so I, I'm I'm totally excited. You know, I'll probably be walking by there every day, peering in the windows, looking at it as it goes up because this is going to be great. All right, and just before we take a vote, just to remind folks, we will have a comprehensive presentation uh, on the 28th. We certainly appreciate uh, Mr. Sikowski as well as uh, Mr. Helzer and Mr. Klein for being here, just in case uh, there were questions that needed to be asked. I'm sorry, uh, to be answered tonight. Uh, and then that being said, you know, the only other thing I'd add uh, really quickly, Councilwoman Spitzley, is it's not even just that intersection. When you look at lifeblood corridors, you look at South MLK, you look at Waverly, you look at, um, those are really, really difficult to move forward. Um, and so one of the things um, that you do is you look at those critical nodes um, that, that are behind or, or next to, or, and you work to reactivate those. Um, and then, uh, you know, investment begets more investment. And, and what I just love about this project is this really is about helping people ascend. Uh, and so when we talk about community-based project, this is just dynamite. And um, you're, you're too, you're too, you're too modest. This is, this is truly your effort. You, you, you hammer, hammer, hammer the third ward. 
I live in the third ward, and so I appreciate that you're my representative because I know you're always on duty. And so, you know, this is this is something that we've been we've we've been fighting for to have this type of development in the third ward because it's been needed, and that, that is that is because of your leadership. I certainly appreciate that. Uh, there is a motion on the floor. I'm sorry, Council uh, Men Brown. Thank you. I just want to add, you know, I concur with everybody and, and you know, want to give, uh, you know, an applause to you, uh, Council uh, President Hussein, because as a, as a Lansing resident, uh, we do see you continuing to be uh, the cheerleader and the pioneer to move forward. Uh, to the Ferguson, um, you know, team, I just am excited, you know, as a resident and, of course, Council um, for the project because, you know, an apple orchard starts from a seed. And I believe that this project is the seed that's going to grow um, the orchard of prosperity in Southwest Lansing. And so we say thank you for that. And I appreciate that. I appreciate the, the, the term cheerleader because that's, I mean, truly that's what I am, right? I sit in these rooms with these really, really capable community leaders and developers and, and I always feel like, and, and that's why I know I'm in the right room, I always feel like I'm the least intelligent person in the room. Um, and I'm just there to cheer and, and uh, you know, make sure that, you know, the, the ball continues to move down the field. So thank you so much again. Uh, that being said, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, we have item um, 18, uh, setting a public hearing for Act 1 of 2022. That would be Councilman Garza, yep. I had you down for some reason. Thank you, Council President. Okay, so what we have before us is uh, setting a public hearing in consideration of Act 1, 2022, Real Estate Purchase Agreement with Griffin Group, LLC at 1020 West Hillsdale Street. That is the former home of, was it the, oh, the, the Union Baptist Church, which was, uh, which was demolished back in 2007. Uh, this property was part of the seven block neighborhood plan in 1993. Uh, the property was acquired by the city utilizing CDBG funding in July of 1999, but was never redeveloped. The property's proposed uh, redevelopment for new residential units does meet the intent of, of and goals of the seven block neighborhood plan. And this was gonna be a 40, potentially a 40 U low, 40 unit low housing, uh, low housing complex. 35% uh, will be, which would be 14 of these, those units will be for special need vouchers. And they will also be requesting six more additional vouchers uh, for uh, people with disabilities. Sounds like it's a time sensitive pilot. They will not be requesting a pilot from the city. Looks like they'll be requesting one from the state of Michigan. Um, the property was appraised at 195. The Griffin Group uh, submitted the only development proposal, which uh, they purchased it for 200,000. Uh, the public, uh, they met with the, uh, the planning board met on February 1st, 2022 and voted unanimously 6-0 to recommend approval of Act 1, 2022. And as of this point, we are moving to set a public hearing for February 28th. And with that, I would move the resolution. Thank you so much. Councilwoman Spitzley. Thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to add one quick thing is they are, they are asking for a 10% pilot Correct. that does not have to come before council. It's a 10% by right. So they are asking for a pilot, but it's a 10% pilot. And just want to clear that up. Thank you for the clarification. Uh, there is a motion on the floor for the discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor signi signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. And item 19, setting a show cause hearing for 2131 Pleasant View. Vice President Wood. Uh, thank you, President Hussein. Uh, what we have before us is the property at 2131 Pleasant View. This property uh, went, um, was red tagged in um, December 3rd, 2019. Um, it went before the uh, demolition board and the recommendation was moved on to council on uh, 10, uh, it went before the demolition board on 10 28 21, uh, came to us on 12 28 um, 2021. Uh, the estimated repairs for this property are $126,168. The SEV uh, value of this is $40,080. Um, $800. 
this property has been in disrepair for for quite some time. Um, the pictures are on the screen showing some of them are upside down and backwards, but they are on the screen. Um, and uh, this has been in disrepair for some time. Uh, the neighborhood as uh, and the community has been wanting action on this. Uh, no one was um, at uh, the public safety meeting to speak on, uh, on this property. No permits have been pulled. And so at this point we are setting um, the public hearing for February 28th. So I would move this. All right, there is a motion on the floor for the discussion. All right, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, and item 20, setting a public hearing uh, for Glenburn Commons assessment. Councilwoman Spitzley, and my understanding is we have a substitute? Yes, we do, Mr. President, and so I guess we'll move the substitute first. The substitute um, has the date of the public hearing, because at the time we moved the resolution, we didn't know when the hearing was going to be, so the substitute has the date, the correct okay, so date of first February on the 28th, 2022, so I would move the substitute. Okay, so on the adoption of the substitute, is there further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, so what we have before us is a um, is a resolution for um, it, it, it's a special assessment for a sub for um, Glenburn Commons um, subdivision, and this is a long-standing issue. On um, the Glenburn Commons, um, they have a common park um, in that area, and as part of their um, deed to the homes in that area, they are. Re you know, the, part of the deed is that they have to maintain um, that park area. And so um, the city of Lansing um, has been providing those services and um, every year we come up with, um, looks like a, a, a cost. And so the cost for the um, November from March 31st, 2021 to November 31st, 2021 is $21,807, which roughly um, adds up to about $47 per home. And so um, we have to set a special, set a public hearing in consideration of this special assessment um, to those homes. And with that, I would move the resolution that establishes a public hearing for Monday, February 28th, 2022. All right, there's a motion on the floor. Vice President Wood. Just to add a little context for the council members that are new, um, this property was part of a condo association and the condo association went defunct. They came to council asking us to make this into a green space or a park area and uh, take, maintain it. Uh, with working with the city attorney's office, uh, what we ended up um, coming up with was uh, a mechanism that would allow a cleanup of the property because people were using it mm -hmm. for junk and things like that along with the fact it wasn't being mowed and taken care of. And so the mechanism was having code compliance go in there and clean it up and they did uh, a couple of very expensive cleanups yeah. in there mm -hmm. and then to maintain it was to mow it on a regular um, basis and so that was divided among all the property owners, whether you abutted the property or not, but were part of that condo association. So that this cost does not come back on the taxpayers of the city of Lansing, but is actually paid by the people within the condo association. We appreciate that. Further questions or comments? Yeah, and I will say, is I think it's been an incredibly successful collaboration uh, between that particular right. neighborhood uh, as well as the city of Lansing. It was, if, if anybody had uh, seen it before, uh, it was cleaned out and mowed, and it was an absolute health and safety concern. Um, and so uh, it's, it's again, tr tremendously well done over the last few years, um, certainly moving that area forward. And again, I don't think we've received a complaint uh, with regards to that particular property at least in the last three or four years, so it's been great. Uh, that being said, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, we have item 22, opposition to off-road 
vehicles ordinance from Eaton County. Vice President Wood. Thank you, uh, President Hussein. Um, as many of the council members know here in the public, we have received a number of complaints uh, about off-road um, vehicles within the city of Lansing. We've had many discussions here at the dais with this. We've asked for help from the city attorney's office. Uh, the mayor has uh, weighed in. The chief of police has, have, has weighed in. Um, and as we uh, have tried to deal with this within the city of Lansing, uh, we became aware that the Eaton County Board of Commissioners are looking at um, proposing an ordinance that would allow um, ORVs within the Eaton County um, jurisdiction. Many of us, um, again, understand that Lansing is not made up of just Ingham County. It's made up of um, Ingham County, Eaton County, and Clinton County. So when a, a neighboring jurisdiction makes a determination that will affect the residents of the city of Lansing, oftentimes we will look at that and to determine whether how best this represents us. Uh, the mayor, uh, along with the city attorney, have strongly objected to uh, this proposed ordinance. The chief of police uh, came before the public safety committee, voiced uh, his concerns. Again, let's use Waverly as an example. Uh, Waverly Road, one side of Waverly Road is Eaton County, one side is Ingham County. There is no magic wall, there is no silver bullet, there is none of those things that you know, designates I'm crossing over into one area or the other. And when we have enforcement, our Lansing, city Lansing um, officers are driving down a Eaton County Road, but enforce, trying to enforce the city of Lansing uh, laws and regulations. Uh, so the Public Safety Committee decided to put a resolution together that would be presented uh, to the Eaton County Board of Commissioners at their public hearing on February 16th. Uh, the president is going to present that uh, resolution. It's our understanding that the chief of police is also going to be there to, to speak to um, this issue as well. Uh, we know that there are some jurisdictions within Eaton County that have talked about opting out and getting um, opt-out language in the ordinance. Again, uh, I'm not sure what sense that makes because there's not a road up there that goes, this one was opted out of and this one wasn't and it's not color-coded on the road. Uh, so when you have these individuals that are using these vehicles, more than likely they are going to be involved in the city of Lansing and the problems that could happen with that. This ordinance also allows as young as 12 year old um, children to be utilizing these vehicles on the streets. We have a number of parks that are in that jurisdiction that will also likely become a problem because they will take them to the parks in that area. You have Hunter's Ridge, you have you know, on Bolton Park, you've got a number of parks in that area that since they can drive down the road, they're going to end up in our parks and causing damage to our parks. So um, having said that, and with that explanation, we did put together uh, the resolution asking them, uh, asking our uh, fellow colleagues with the Eaton County Board of Commissioners um, not to pass this ordinance and that it would be detrimental to uh, the residents of the city of Lansing. So with that, I would move the resolution. I'm not sure if the mayor would like to uh, make any comments at, at this time as well. Um, I turn it over, if my may, Mr. President, to sure, the mayor. mayor. Yeah, sure, Mayor Shore. Well, thank you. I, I can't say it any better than that. Um, we certainly were notified uh, some time ago that this was being taken up. Uh, I did speak with Councilwoman Wood, knowing, knowing she was chair of the committee, knowing of her, her passion for this, 
Uh, I think I spoke with many of you, I know I spoke with uh, many of you about um, the, just the numerous complaints that we've heard about uh, um, these off-road vehicles on our roads throughout our city. And uh, certainly, <laughs> it's a good way to put it, there is no magic wall. Um, you know, people don't think, oh, I'm leaving Eaton County and going into Ingham County, so I should get off the road. They just go. Um, and we know that, that it's a problem for our police, and, and our police don't want to chase them because that's dangerous. So our police have had to go into tactics to figure out where they're meeting in order to, to get at them and, and confiscate. And, um, and it's a huge challenge. And it's a huge challenge for our citizens. So for everybody out there watching it, you know, many of you have spoken to all of us, have spoken to me, have spoken to all of us as we campaigned and as we meet with constituents about these, um, these off-road vehicles on our roads, on our trails, in our parks. Um, it is a huge challenge, especially during the pandemic, especially when, um, when there was so much anger and, and frustration. Um, this was a big deal. So I think that, uh, I, you know, I, 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 um, I greatly respect my colleagues in Eaton County and on the Board of Commissioners, and they have a job to do. But uh, this is, I think, very bad timing. Um, and it just it sends the wrong signal. So I have expressed my opposition. I greatly appreciate this resolution coming to council and council expressing their will. I think I know how the vote's gonna go, I'm hopeful. Um, but uh, it's, just, it's just not good for, for the citizens of Lansing. That's who we he are here representing. And, and uh, I do appreciate the hard work that was done on this by the, by the council and the council committee. And, and we stand together on this like we do so many other things. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, Councilman Jackson. Thank you. I just have a question and then possibly a comment or two. And it goes to the city attorney first for the question on what is the, I guess, ramifications if Eaton County passed their ordinance on our city of Lansing spot in Southwest Lansing. Could a person drive their off-road vehicle on Sheffield or could they still not based on our laws? If it's in um, um, Sheffield is in, in Lansing. Oh, so if it's in Eaton County, um, uh, they so they could drive in an Eaton County, uh, right? I mean, we couldn't. I mean, they could legitimately do that on that road. Yes. Okay. Um, now, and we have an ordinance too, but if they cross over to Lansing, then as the mayor indicated, the police would have to get involved, but that causes dangerous situations. I understand that, but I guess just to be clear, you're saying their ordinance would somehow be stronger than our ordinance that says you can't. Theirs that says you can would override ours that says you cannot. They would have authority under their ordinance, but they would be violating our ordinance in Lansing, which causes a problem for the police. Right. And Trying I know to decide what's which one is applicable and where are you know where's the boundary line and crossing over that type of thing. Sure, it's but I mean, problem. I guess you could inform our officers that this part of Lansing is still off limits. I mean. You could, and they could just take a mental note or whatever. It's um, probably a policing problem. And I just want to make sure that, I guess, what, how that interplayed. And then just my quick comment. So it's still illegal to drive recklessly on any street, including with an off-road vehicle. Um, I understand our problems in our city. It's just that Eaton County, their own jurisdiction and their own elected people, I'm kind of hesitant to, you know, interject into their affairs, especially when they have a completely different, like, setup than we have in their rural county. I know they have Delta, possibly parts of Lansing, but other than that, city of Charlotte um, is pretty much rural out there. And also, I think that ordinance that they're introducing says you can only drive on these smaller I don't know the classification of the roads, but they, they have a map that says you can't drive on these big ones. Um, so I'll just be a little bit hesitant to, you know, interject in that when they have their own processes. And it's still illegal to ride in Lansing, and it's still illegal 
to be reckless and ransom strangers. Yeah, and there's there, there's truth to that uh, in terms of your primary versus your um, non-primary roads. I think one of the confusing aspects in terms of what they're considering, though, is, is that it does allow them to cross over any roadway in the county in order to access um, those non-primary roads. So, so again, just incredibly confusing for folks. I believe that there's opt-out language for both um, Delta and Benton Townships. Um, and, and obviously, you know, they can do the same thing for the city of Lansing. But again, there's just so much confusion. Um, and I think, you know, Vice President uh, Wood spoke very eloquently about uh, just adding to that uh, for citizens in the city of Lansing. Uh, Vice President Wood. Um, as, as we stated just a few minutes ago, and even Councilmember um, uh, Jackson brought it up, you know, um, we do have Lansing residents that can speak to um, Eaton County representatives because they vote for them. So um, I would encourage our Lansing residents to call uh, area code 517-543. 2488 to express your concerns or send an email to countyclerk at eatoncounty.org. Again, I think the whole issue becomes that you end up um, using our police resources to try to determine where they are, whether they've crossed over, whether this is a violation, whether it isn't a violation, going to court, trying, you know, whether they're getting a ticket or not. And um, I, I believe, and, and I think that as um, a resident of Lansing and the fact that this affects Lansing, that this is poor legislation that will have a detrimental effect on our community. And that's why I encourage our council members to pass this. Councilwoman Spitzley. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, so I, I appreciate um, what Councilmember Jackson says about um, laws on the books regarding reckless driving. I will share that my cousin lives on Sheffield, and that's, you know, across Waverly, and um, it's a problem. Um, and for me, because I live right off Waverly, I get that traffic sometimes. I mean, I, I get off road, I had snowmobiles going down my street, down, you know, during the snowstorm, and I, I get uh, I get uh, four wheelers often, and I and I just you know it's it's again it's it is difficult I think for police to figure out where the jurisdiction is. Mm -hmm. um, Waverly Road is just kind of that weird area, um, but it is a problem over in that that subdivision area over by Sheffield and where the park is. Yeah, and I think it's important that, that we do reference the people that live there um, so that folks know, as the ward representative, I did attend the Lansing Eat Neighborhood Organization's January meeting, um, brought this issue to them. Um, I've been very you know, frank about, you know, I take my marching orders for the people, for, from the people I represent. And so what I did was just um, essentially uh, introduced what it was that they were looking at um, and asked, you know, obviously them of their opinions. Uh, and they certainly, uh, I think to the last person uh, in terms of that meeting, to the last person they were against it, um, and so <clears throat> we did some of that engagement before we even ever brought this before the committee. Uh, Mr. Smirka. Just to be clear, the Eden County Ordinance does not preempt Lansing's enforcement of its ordinance in Lansing, just so we're clear on that. Are there other questions, comments? There is a motion on the floor, so seeing and hearing none. Uh, all those in favor in terms of the um, resolution of opposition, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, we have the late item, the uh, setting of the public hearing for um, the special land use. Vice President Wood. Um, I believe, it, do you want Councilmember Garza since this is yep, going to go back to the committee? Yep, I'm sorry, Garza, yes. You got it? Okay, perfect. Okay, resolve. So this is the special land unit, the late item for 5411 Wise Road, parcel 33-01-5-6-251-21, special land use permit, electrical substation, and R2 suburban detached residential zoning district. And with that, I would uh, move the resolution. 
Fantastic. Uh, public hearing being the 14th, correct? Is that what I heard? Okay. Uh, there is a motion on the floor for the discussion. Seeing and hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, and that takes us to um, ordinances for introduction and setting of public hearings. We have an ordinance of the City of Lansing, Michigan to amend the Lansing codified ordinances by adding chapter 256, sections 256.01 to 256.04 to create the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion DEI Advisory Board to provide <coughs> composition and function and to define its duties. The ordinance is read a first time by its title and referred to the Committee of the Whole. Uh, okay, the Committee on DEI. Yep, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Councilman Jackson. Thank you, Mr. President. We're being asked to consider amending our codified ordinances to add Chapter 256, which would establish or create a diversity, equity, and inclusion advisory board. This started last year um, through a lot of work with the Mayor's Racial Justice Equity Alliance, and they came out with um, this draft ordinance that's been redrafted about seven times with input from council members and I believe some other people. But basically, the um, advisory board would put in our laws, our codes, our ordinances, this board with, um, and I'll just read a couple of the sentences from the ordinance, um, but the advisory board would help examine and address issues of diversity, equity, and inclusion. It would operationalize, implement, and maintain the racial justice and equity plan for diversity, equity, and inclusion. It would serve as a direct liaison, liaison between the greater community and city hall, amplify the voices and address the needs of the people. And it would work with the city's diversity, equity, inclusion officer. So this is basically the recommendation, part of the outcome from the mayor's alliance. And I think it's supposed to be the next step to um, make framework and a an sustainable yearly annual um, advisory board to do the work in diversity, equity, inclusion. We, as council, we still have our committee. Um, I'm sure they will probably work together, but we um, received this from the mayor's office and it's introduced today and we would set it for, I'd move to set it for a public hearing on February 28th. All right, there is a motion on the floor. Is there further discussion? Vice President Wood. Um, I'm just looking at the ordinance under the establishment of membership. I'm assuming that based on the section that is uh, clarified in here from the city charter that this is eight members mm -hmm. and one from each ward and the four at large, is that the makeup of the membership? That is correct. So you, have, you would have the four at large, you'd have the four wards, uh, they would be staggered uh, mayor uh, would obviously have appointment power and we would have com uh, confirmation power. Okay. And th then the advisory. I'm sorry. Th the department for the advisory staffing this board. So our understanding um, is that that would be our diversity, equity, and inclusion officer, but we certainly can um, make that, that we, uh, to be honest with you, we didn't question that uh, in committee. Okay. And so we'll make sure that we, so after yeah, the, that, public the public hearing. Yeah, okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. Not a problem. Others. All right. The only I, I guess I did have one question. So um, you might recall back in 2018 we had this conversation as part of our committee, uh, Mayor Shore. Back in 2018, through executive order, um, the MIDAC board was put together, um, and they did um, their work, really yeoman's work, I thought, um, quietly um, and put together a number of suggestions and. Uh, they were working on things like ADA compliance um, in the summer of 2020 um, when the MRJ EA was announced. I believe it was uh, July of 2020. Um, and a couple months later, um, there was a letter that was actually sent to uh, Mr. Randy Watkins that said that uh, they, they would be asked to essentially cease operations for a year. Um, what I would love to see um, is that those MIDAC members, and I understand that I believe you know between July and, and September we lost some six members, um, but I would, I would love to see them um, considered uh, for appointments to this board. As a matter of fact, I, I brought the idea to um, the committee of potentially, um, when this comes back from a public hearing to committee, um, considering a companion resolution of support um, for that. 
Uh, but I just think, you know, when you talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion, and you talk about the work, um, so much of that centers around restoration. Um, and, and I think in terms of restoring and, and moving forward and uh, because of, you know, in it, some things, you know, not everything was, um, what's the word? I, I want to be as artful as possible. Um, there, there were some relationships that were strained and things of that nature through the process. Um, and just because of the work that they put in and because of uh, the way that kind of uh, ended, um, I would love to see um, at least a consideration of that. Um, and I did see Councilman Brown's hand go up. Thank you, President Hussein. Um, and correct me if this is not the right time, but in looking at this, I would like to also see, I know that uh, I believe last year, the year before, the council um, adopted um, increasing the general funds, uh, human relations, uh, human services grants for uh, equity and diversity work. And I don't see that this um, advisory board would have anything to do with the um, the, the applications maybe for that work, um, similar to how uh, HRCS looks over and, and scores uh, applications for that work and helps decide what service providers or community providers are delivering that service in our community. So if we have an advisory board uh, that we're creating, um, you know, it would be, uh, I believe, advantageous to also include their voices and you know their their work into the decisions or the applications of people uh, groups that are applying um, to be community partners in Lansing to actually effectively implement uh, that work. I appreciate that. Are there others, Councilman Garza? I, I just have one question. So this is to establish the. I'm sorry, uh, Vice President Wood. So this is to establish the committee, correct? We're, what mission, we're looking I'm to sorry. do today is to set the public hearing. Set the public yeah. hearing, and then after that would be establishing the commission. Now, who who's responsible of appointing the members of the commission? Is it the Me mayor? Sure. I, and then it's confirmed by council. So I guess I would just like to get a, a recommendation to you, Mayor, if that we if you're looking at appointing these members, that we look at every different ethnic group out there as well as the LGBTQ. So it is a true diversity panel or commission that we're we're doing, so that not one marginalized group gets uh, overshadowed by another. Thank you, uh, Vice President Wood, and then Mayor Shore. Um, I'd also like to make sure that we are looking at the disability um, community as well as part of this um, when when we're going through this. And I realize again, this is just setting the public hearing. It's going to go back to. Uh, uh, Council Member um, Jackson's uh, committee, but he's taking notes on some of our comments here that um, as, as it comes back out again, that maybe some of these issues uh, can be uh, clarified um, at that time um, with that. So um, I yield the floor to the May. Mayor Shore. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you all for your comments. Um, certainly this is a board that um, that would be appointed by me and approved by you. I would, we sent a, a version over to council. And I think as the chairman said, it's gone through a variety of different versions. Councilman Betts had some changes. I think some others had some changes. Um, certainly I am not wedded to the, to the eight members, you know, four at large, four per ward. If you want to set specific slots, if you want to put someone in for the LGBT community, if you want to put someone in for the uh, disability community, I'm open to that. Uh, I'm open to all of those things. Right now, the only thing that's specified in the in the um, the board that we sent is four at large and four um, one per ward. If you want to increase the number, we did I think twelve for the arts uh, the arts board. Eight is standard, but if council members have interest in increasing and and slotting specific spots, I'm all about it. Um, so I certainly welcome your thoughts and comments. The one uh, amendment I have, Councilman. Uh, Council President is uh, Randy Watkins and I sent that letter out together with the MIDAC members and the intention was to combine the two into one and discuss all those issues, which was more or less done, but we also knew that we were going to push for a, a formal city board rather than two different mayoral advisory boards. We wanted a formal city board. But again, if, if folks are interested, whether it comes through the committee or this council process in um, specifically slotted spots, I, got, I don't know if you have to check with legal on that and see. Um, you know, if people are going, if we're going to slot an LGBTQ spot, does someone have to declare? And, and I don't, I'd probably have some concerns about that, but 
I, I'm open to that as long as we do our due diligence and homework on um, on how to slot, you know, the appropriately diverse uh, and inclusion spots. Um, but that's certainly my interest is to see a variety of opinions and thoughts um, on that board, just as it was for MIDAC when we first started. MIDAC had complete turnover within two years, just because we had a variety of folks who, um, who uh, for a variety of reasons. But uh, I'm certainly open to whatever conversations you want to have in terms of, of spots on the board. And we appreciate that. A uh, couple things. Number one, uh, what was in your committee packet, I'm sorry, council packet, uh, was actually draft seven. Uh, in terms of committee, what we did was we actually passed uh, for the introduction and setting up a public hearing, uh, draft 11. Um, and so what we did is uh, we had those printed up real quick. Um, those are in front of you, uh, so feel free to um, take a look. Uh, that being said, Mr. Smirka and then Vice President Wood. Just following up on the mayor's comment, the charter does allow an ordinance to establish a bigger board. Uh, so I think the arts was 12 or something along those lines. Yep, it was 12. Thank you so much. Uh, Vice President Wood. There, there is the potential of having ex officios mm -hmm. that are from the various um, different groups that would be advisors to the board. So there's a couple of ways that, that you could potentially look at this. If I, Mr. Spread, if I can add one. And I, and I agree with, I agree and I, I support that. And I know, you know, in some cases we have some boards that don't have Lansing residents um, and you can't have a voting member, but in Esoficio you could if there was an expert that may not be a Lansing resident. We see that in other boards. Yes. I, I'm fully supportive of, again, whatever whatever we have to make sure that this is an effective uh, board for our city. Um, so if you all just keep me in the loop on where you're going with this, Mark um, is certainly uh, my person that, that can kind of wade through all that. but. Um, I look forward to the to the, the um, recommendations of council. Appreciate the the very good conversation. Fantastic, uh, Councilman Brown. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with um, uh, Councilman Garza and and Council. Oh, can you guys hear me? First, Councilman Garza as well as uh, Councilman Wood. Um, and you know, just to throw throw some input in there, and maybe not necessarily um, draft groups, but in other organizations that I've served in, it's really about what's the population and the diversity um, from the data in Lansing. So, for example, if two percent are African Americans, maybe two percent you know represent or whatever uh, the color of makeup, and then you know people can self-identify that they're a part of that group. And I also um, have found that many times we leave out our um, our international group as well, um, and a lot of the dialogue uh, too. So, thank you. Thank you, uh, Councilman Jackson. Just one point. I know we'll probably talk about it in committee, but um, just to be kind of wary of quote unquote slots, because I know a lot of people would rather have a person whose ideas are more conducive to helping a marginalized group than just a representative from the marginalized group who might not necessarily associate or act in those people's best interests. So although representation matters, it still also matters to have the right mindset behind that person as well. All right, are there further comments, questions? Seeing and hearing none, uh, this would be again setting a uh, public hearing for February 28th. All those in favor signify uh, by saying aye. 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 aye, all those opposed, same sign. Most Okay, we are to uh, speaker registration for public comment on city government related matters. Um, so that is um, any the yellow form in the back, uh, and you can talk about anything related to the operation or governance of the city for up to three minutes. We'll be uh, closing that sign up period off in about one minute. And in the meantime, we're to reports of city officers, boards, and commissions. Vice President Wood. Thank you, President Hussein. I would move at this time that all items be considered as being read in full and that the proper referrals be made by you, Mr. President. Thank you so much. There is a motion on the floor. Further discussion? Seeing and hearing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. <laughs> motion carries. We have items from the city clerk, minutes of boards and commissions. Place on file. Uh, liquor license for uh, Lansing Hotel investors at 11 
111 North Grand Avenue. City Operations. A liquor license for RBM Properties at 224 South Washington Square. City Operations. Uh, fiscal year 2021-2022 vacancy report. Uh, Committee of the Whole. Items from the mayor setting a hearing and uh, the action for uh, an ordinance to provide requirements for owners of firearms to report the theft thereof and provide penalties penalties for failure to make a report. Public safety. Uh, fees, non-resident tennis fee. Uh, ways and means. Uh, Greater Lansing Regional Committee for Stormwater Management Memora Memorandum of Agreement. City Operations. Appointment of Benjamin Brewer to the Saginaw Quarter Improvement Authority. Development and Planning. Uh, lot split to divide uh, 3220 and 3330 West Miller Road. Development and Planning. And a lot split to divide property between 5000 and 5022 Christensen Road. Development and Planning. The appointment of Abigail Clamperins to the Human Relations and Community Services Board. City Operations. Appointment of Clara Martinez to the Arts and Culture Commission. City Operations. Uh, appointment of Brian Baer to the Capillaria District Library Board. City Operations. Uh, sole source purchase for Plant Moran uh, for e-filing services. Ways and means. And uh, Collective bargaining agreement, um, MOU with the United Auto Workers Local 2256. Committee of the Whole. Communications and petitions and affidavit of disclosure, Luciana Solis from the Mayor's Office. Ethics Board. And uh, notice from the Liquor Control Commission of a batter up LLC request for a new license. Uh, city operations. We are to motion of excused absence. Council Member Brown. I motion that we excuse uh, Councilman Peter Spatterford. All right, there is a motion on the floor. Further discussion? Seeing and hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those aye. opposed, same sign. Motion carries. And communications and petitions. I'm sorry. <laughs> remarks, remarks by, by council members. Do we have any remarks? Uh, Mr. Jackson. Just quickly want to wish everybody a happy Valentine's Day, Aww. especially my wife, Arielle Jackson. And happy eighth anniversary to us too. Happy anniversary. Are there others? All right. Remarks by the mayor. Mayor Shore. None. Okay. Public comments on city government related matters. We have one speaker, John Pavlik. Good evening and thank you for the opportunity to speak to you this evening and congratulations to the new council members and those who have been reelected. My name is John Pavlik, a lifelong Lansing resident growing up on South Hayford Street. Our house backed up to diversified South Foster Park and I attended Allen Street School, Pattengill Junior High and I'm a graduate of Eastern High School. I also attended LCC in the early 1970s and served six years in the Army National Guard, the Chief of Staff Division at the South Washington Armory here in Lansing. My resume is Lansing. This past July, I celebrated 50 years in my business at the electronic outlet Car Audio Retail Store on South Pennsylvania and Jolly. We have never experienced the type of targeted crime that we have seen take place in the past year. A shootout in our parking lot an agitated customer bent on causing destruction and loss of customer property from parking lot break-ins that have been, having, been uh, happening frequently. It's troubling the limited response time when the police are summoned to this type of crime. I'm not here to criticize the Lansing Police Department. I've always been supportive of our law enforcement professionals. In talking with our police officers, they are 20 to 25% understaffed. Overextended, the morale is at an all-time low, our police department patrol units have been reduced 30 to 40 percent compared to the 1970s through the 1990s. And how is that working for us? The stats indicates it's not. As business owners, what can we do to fix this? When reaching out to other businesses in our South Lansing area, 
they're experiencing the same type of crimes. My challenge to Mayor Shore and all of you city council members is to arrange a police patrol right along during the second or third shift to see firsthand what is actually happening around our city on a nightly basis and get perspective on what the local businesses are dealing with and without recourse. And the criminals know it. The police officers put their lives on the line every day to protect and serve the people of our great city of Lansing. They cannot respond to us when we need them unless we respond to them and meet their needs. I've talked with several of the dealership owners in South Lansing. It's a major problem with smash and dash, one dealership, one night hits seven cars. I mean, this thing is just getting crazy. And, and the police are so extended, they just can't, they just can't get there. Uh, I think it's time to do something. We've never seen this. Thank you. All right. With no other uh, business before the body, we are adjourned at 841.